In the past few weeks, I've seen the most bald-faced lies from the most powerful people, the richest people, the elites of the world. It was only a few weeks ago at the first presidential debate that Joe Biden pledged that he will not claim victory, no matter what, he will not claim victory before it's officially certified. That means all 50 states, those Secretary of States, have to certify that such and such, so and so is the winner. Joe Biden's already broken his promise and the media ignores it. The media covers it up. Uh, it's amazing to me how evil people seem so powerful because they stick together. But Christians often don't stick together and often bite and bicker and attack each other. And it's just astounding to me how God puts up with all this. There is no question the media was wrong, if, if not if not completely complicit in lying to the people and swaying the people through false polls. Just like 2016, it's really even worse. The fact is, despite all of the majority of the polls, there was no blue wave. There was a red wave. Republicans held the Senate, Republicans won new House seats, and they swept up governorships all over the states. And this is all based on the Trump brand. So my question is, are we to believe that the Trump brand was good for everybody except Trump? It's unbelievable. And there's so many anomalies that we have to talk about. First of all, uh, if you talk about mail-in votes, you will get these labels by Facebook and Twitter that assure us, not really assure us, that tell us what is the approved thought. And they say, there's no question about mail-in votes. Uh, any question of it is baseless, completely baseless. That's the word that they use. And yet, the amazing thing is, if you look at the facts all around the world, when people go to vote, they're very concerned about voter fraud. In most countries, especially if they're just getting into a good democratic system, you have to put your thumb or your finger into this dye ink that you can't wash off to prove that you are a legitimate citizen that voted once. All right? And they will show you their thumb or their finger. The fact is, 47% of OECD countries ban mail-in voting. They don't accept it unless there'll be some exception, like if you're living abroad, then you have to show your, you know, your citizenship, your voter ID, and then uh, only in such small exceptions you could mail in your vote. But 47%, that's basically half, say no, that's not allowed. 63% of EU countries, European Union countries, ban mail-in voting unless you're living abroad. So again, why, do they, why did they do this? I mean, France has this since the 1970s because of the rampant, massive fraud that mail-in voting is prone to. Japan bans mail-in voting. Mexico bans mail-in voting. Russia bans mail-in voting. Brazil bans mail-in voting. And they all do it for the same reason, because it's prone to massive fraud. So why do big tech and big media deny the fact? Why do they deny the truth? They always like to say people don't believe whatever they say are deniers. They're the deniers of the truth. And they want us to believe the total opposite. The, the effort to pull the wool over our eyes are just amazing. Now you also have whistleblowers that are coming out. And they get harassed by FBI agents. And then if you try to talk about them, uh, like I tried to tweet about it, and right away you get this slap on your social media, like, you know, uh, bad behavior, you, you're not telling the truth, false information. It, this is not false at all. Uh, there are now a lot of computer geeks who are going through the data which was being fed, you know, nearly live on TV, and we all saw it. And there were votes that were flipped in a microsecond, one from, you know, tens of thousands drop from Trump and then go up for Biden. And there's one analysis here that was published by the American Thinker. Again, so hard to find this, you have to search for it unless you're watching our channel or unless you're watching alternative uh, independent news media. You hear nothing, nothing from the journalists. What happened to journalists doing their job? They're the ones saying, can you show any evidence of voter fraud? My question is, 
Isn't that your job? Isn't that what you're supposed to be doing? And instead, it's preachers like us because we care about the truth. We care about democracy. We care about our freedom of religion. And so we have to talk about these things. Um, like most people, we went to bed around 1 or 2 in the morning of November 4th and, you know, in American time, and you could see Trump was up. In every swing state, he was up, and up by a huge margin. But by around 4.30 a.m., everything had flipped. And we have to analyze this, and so one guy, his name is uh, Pede Inspector, so we'll call him Pede. Now, that's a rude word in French, so I won't say what that means. It sounds like he's a European guy. So here's a computer analysis guy, okay? Uh, a geek, you might call him. Now, he analyzed this line by line. He downloaded the data. This is, by the way, so let's explain this. Pennsylvania uses the Dominion voting system, the same Dominion voting system that flipped 6,000 votes from Trump to Biden. And they did this for other candidates as well. All right. So Pennsylvania uses this software. And then they forward their data to Edison Research, which then JavaScript encodes it and sends it on to New York Times and the rest of the networks. So PEDE, or PEDE, if you want to call them, P-E-D-E, PEDE, downloaded the Edison data for Pennsylvania from the New York Times and analyzed it to locate all similar vote switches, as well as votes that just, poof, went missing. And you know what he found? As of midnight, November 11, so this IT guy, Pede, he says, I made a script to run through the data and gather all instances where votes switched from Trump to Biden. Lost votes means the total amount of votes counted decreased by that amount throughout the county. So here are the results for the swing states. Pennsylvania, 220,883 votes switched. 941,248 votes lost. Florida, 21,000. I'm just going to round it up now. 21,000 switched. Lost votes, 456. Michigan, 20,000 switched. 21,000 lost. Georgia, 17,000 switched. 33,000 lost. Wisconsin, 2,000 switched. 3,400 3, lost. North Carolina, zero switched loss 15. Very interesting stuff here that's going on. So what it looks like at this stage is that the Democrats were believing their own propaganda that Biden actually had so many points lead against Trump. And on election night, it looked like it wasn't going to work. Maybe they had stuffed enough, you know, they they'd put a lot of fake votes and dead votes in and Biden was still losing. And so as we went to sleep around 3, 4 in the morning, a lot of shenanigans happened, and then they started going electronic. But because the margin was so wide, the electronic fix had to be so large that it was easily detectable by anyone who can read, you know, computer codes and computer scripts. So this is what the actual quote as of midnight November 11 would be. All right, this is what the vote would be. Now, this is many, many days after the November 3rd election. So you've had time now to put all the ballots in and, and all that and destroy some Trump votes. Despite all that, if you correct each candidate's vote total by what Pede detected as vote switches, then the results are as follows. Pennsylvania, Trump wins 55% to 44%. Trump would have 3,550,163 votes. Biden would have 3,159,000. Michigan, Trump loses 2,668,000 versus Biden, 2,774,000. Georgia, Trump wins 2,475,263. Biden loses at 2,454,538. So Trump would win by a 50.5% vote versus Biden 49.5%. All right, and this actually is only accounting for the electronic switches. This is not counting for all the paper ballot frauds that look like was going on as well. According to the Epoch Times, 
What this means is if you don't count the contested states right now, that means that they've gone back into recount, like Georgia is going to do a manual recount, right, by hand, all counts, millions of votes, or they're still counting, or they're in litigation. You don't count those votes. What the Electoral College map looks like right now is Trump is winning 232 versus Biden 227. Now, where do you hear that? And if you put that on Facebook, they say this is false information. If you put it on Twitter, Twitter says this uh, fraud claim is in dispute. Well, let me tell you something, Twitter, breaking news. The whole election is in dispute. The whole election is in dispute. And so people are allowed to debate and have a conversation and present the evidence. When did journalists and social media companies not want evidence, not, not seek evidence of the truth? It's just bizarre. We're about to start the intermediate level of discipleship path. It's going to run for 40 weeks. So you are not too late. Uh, we've covered four sessions of the basic level. You can still catch up on that. You go to discoverchurch.online, pick courses, and then uh, sign up, register, and you'll be with us. And we'll have live interaction every two weeks. It's really a great time mentoring. We've had people heal. We've had people delivered. We've had people send in great testimonies. Uh, it's a good time. So sign up for the discipleship path. Also remember that we have a lot of you listening, a lot of people listening all over the world, and probably... You know, not everybody gets to the end of an hour sermon, but those of you that do, you really love us and you love our ministry. And I thank you that you support us from a distance. But I'm asking you, come a little bit closer. We got 300,000 people watching us uh, regularly, and yet less than 1%, less than 1% sent any kind of support. Man, if people, if each person just gave a dollar, imagine what would that mean? Obviously, that would mean $300,000. That would be uh, amazing. So much that we can do, so much. And uh, we have a lot of plans. We're building a ministry center. We got a prayer center. We got Bible courses. And we're going to go on mission trips like we used to do as soon as this COVID lockdown is finished. And uh, you'll be a part of all those things. So we are touching lives. We're preaching the gospel. And I invite you send something, give something, ask God, what should I contribute towards this end time ministry? And then you can have a part in what we're doing and a part in the reward that we'll receive in heaven. We're together in this for the glory of God.